Mr. Speaker, I move that we open the period of interpellation and debate on the proposed measure. The period for interpellation and debate is hereby open. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the gentleman from Bayan Muna Party List, the Honorable Mary Colmenares, to interpellate the distinguished sponsor. Colmenares is hereby, uh, Congressman Colmenares is hereby recognized. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Speaker. May would our distinguished colleague and a friend doon sa impeachment be willing to take a few questions, uh, Mr. Speaker? Most willingly, Mr. Speaker. Before I start my interpellation, I would like first to commend our colleague. Kasi kanina, sabi ko sa kanya, may sakit ka, uh, Congressman Ray. Uh, why should you undergo this... Uh, defense, eh, may sakit kayo at namumutla pa nga siya ngayon. Ano? Ang sagot niya sa akin, Neri, duty calls. So, I really have to do my role. No? And uh, I commend you for that. No? Uh, I'm sorry. Talagang uh, ngayon nakaupo na reminds me of the minority leader before, no? uh, Congressman Lagman, during those days. No? Uh, but Sabi ko rin sa kanya, duty calls then. Kaya I really have to interpolate. No? So, um, sana naman, uh, the bill itself, Mr. Speaker, sorry, the, the proposal of Malacanang and DOE, Mr. Speaker, is very difficult to defend. Kaya uh, uh, medyo nahirapan din ako sa task na binibigay natin kay Congressman Umali Dahil sa pagtingin siyempre namin, mahirap i-defend ang uh, proposal ng emergency powers. I'd like first to ask a, a few questions on procedure, no? sa procedural aspect. Um, um, may we know, Mr. Speaker, uh, when the House Joint Resolution number 21 was approved by the committee? Uh, Mr. Speaker, am I correct that it was approved on November 18, Mr. Speaker? That is correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Ang naalala ko po kasi, distinguished colleague, ang bill na tinatalakay ng Committee on Energy was a simple resolution to investigate whether or not there was a shortage of supply of electricity. Pero noong araw na aprubahan ang resolusyon na iyon, ang ating inaprubahan ay isang House Joint Resolution Number no. 21 na procedurally, Mr. Speaker, hindi ito yung nakatable doon sa komite when uh, we deliberated on the measure, Mr. Speaker. Will this not suffer from uh, questions of either violation of our rules or violation of the Constitution? considering that we approved a resolution different from that originally being tackled by the committee, Mr. Speaker? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I uh, don't believe so because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if at all that there was uh, a, uh, a defect uh, in this House Joint Resolution, that has been cured when this was filed on October, uh, November 14, and this was referred to the House uh, Committee on Energy on uh, November 17, 2014. So uh, the fact of the matter is that House Joint Resolution 21 was filed even before the House Committee on uh, Energy uh, convened its second hearing on the matter. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you will... Uh, Take note of uh, the agenda for the uh, second uh, House Committee on Energy hearing. It already incorporated and included House Joint Resolution 21 as part of the agenda of the uh, uh, hearing on November 18, 2014. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ang kopya ko kasi nakalagay dito November 17. No? And uh, ito yung receipt ng Energy Committee. Uh, first question, Mr. Speaker, can a simple resolution be transformed into a joint resolution upon approval when, in fact, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, nagsimula lang siya as a simple resolution to investigate? Uh, hindi po ba violation ng rules natin yan? na na-transform into a joint resolution, meaning to say kasama ang Senado, when in fact it started as a simple resolution by the House, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my understanding is that based on, uh, based on uh, uh, precedent uh, in this uh, August chamber, um, um, a joint resolution or house joint resolution uh, can be a product of a uh, house committee resolution. That's why uh, when we approved the house joint resolution number 21, this is also as uh, this is also being approved as part of the report of uh, house committee uh, resolution 15. 33. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, sa akin, uh, there is a mention of pre uh, precedent, pero I guess the rule sana should apply, especially since this is a crucial uh, resolution that will be tackled. Kasi dagdag pa, Mr. Speaker, under Section 35 of the House Rule, isn't there a need for a three-day notice para sa mga miyembro bago matakel ang isang uh, uh, resolution or bill. Pero kanina, uh, noong, in fact, nung we approved this uh, resolution on uh, November uh, 20, sorry, November 18, uh, hindi ko nga alam na ito palang ina-approve natin. In fact, I was rushing na, o oh, 21 na palang ina-approve natin. All the while, I was looking at the previous resolutions. And Considering also that the bill, uh, sorry, the resolution was submitted to the Energy Committee only on November 17, and the hearing for approval of the said resolution was done on November 18. Doesn't this also violate our trade three-day notice rule and the the uh, issue of, of course, consultation, transparency, because uh, there was no way members of the committee could have known that Resolution 21 was scheduled as an agenda one day after it was filed at exactly, or it was referred at exactly 2.15 p.m. of November 17, Mr. Speaker. Uh, that may not be entirely correct, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, while this House Joint Resolution was still unnumbered because it was still a draft, we already discussed this uh, in the Committee on Energy hearing on October 20. In fact, uh, I distinctly recall that uh, you even raised an issue on this uh, last uh, uh, in the October 20 hearing. So there was no attempt not to be transparent at all because uh, uh, from the very start, uh, this, uh, the draft of this uh, House Joint Resolution was circulated. In fact, we did not only circulate this to, uh, to uh, members of the House of Representatives, but even to uh, all stakeholders that were uh, attending uh, various uh, technical working group hearings and committee hearings and even caucuses. Uh, to my recollection, uh, I even uh, recalled you attending one of the caucuses of the uh, uh, JCPC. So, there is no intent at all, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Your Honor, uh, not to be transparent about the whole thing. In fact, uh, this is why when uh, we were able to get all of the inputs in place, immediately we filed house
One minute suspension. Congressman Colmenares. Yes, yes. I, <clears throat> I have a pending question, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in response to the query of uh, Congressman Colmenares, uh, let me, perhaps what uh, could be shared are the names of these plants, uh, minus, of course, uh, the details, as uh, mentioned because of some confidentiality concerns. Anyway, this is uh, Ilihan, Limay 1 and 5, Angat 1, 2, and 4, Bakon 2, Kaseknan 2, San Roque 2, and 3, and I stand corrected, 10 power plants instead of 9, as uh, I earlier responded. Salamat, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker. So, San Roque ang pinaka last na plant? Mr. Speaker. That is correct. Uh, two and three. Yes. Are any of these plants mentioned in the PEMC decision which penalize certain plants for withholding supply artificially or refusing to or uh, violating the uh, must offer rule of WESE, Mr. Speaker? Are any of these named plants uh, listed in the PEMC decision? The uh, information is not available as yet, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Your Honor, uh, but uh, we will get it from PEMC and uh, we will uh, uh, provide you that information. This uh, representation uh, assures, uh, Your Honor, that uh, I will personally provide you this information. Salamat. I'm sure the distinguished colleague will really do his best to get that information. Ang problem dito, Mr. Speaker, is they, the DOE and NGCP promised this during the committee hearing. Tapos, uh, mula man lang silang courtesy na to say, ah, confidential. Ngayon ko lang narinig tong confidentiality clause, Mr. Speaker. Nilagay nila sa alanganin yung si Congressman Umali because of that promise. And the chairman approved that. So, I would like to assure the distinguished colleague na from among the plants you mentioned, meron dyan na na-found guilty ng PEMC for, for purposely withholding supply and violating the must offer rule ng WSM. Ibig sabihin, meron siyang supply, hindi niya binenta, hindi niya in-offer. That is the problem here. Kasi may mga planta dyan na involved. Noong malampaya shutdown last year, sila na naman ngayon ang involved sa shutdown na naman in the coming months, Mr. Speaker. At ngayon, ang sabihin ng DOE, hindi namin alam kung sino sa mga plantang yan ang involved noong malampaya shutdown. Isn't the DOE suspicious? Yeah, that was the main critique in, sa ERC doon sa petition namin sa Korte Suprema. Eh. The Mer Meralco asked for the highest ever uh, you know, rate hike in history. Wala man lang kayong suspicion. Konte, ERC. Then there was massive simultaneous plant shutdowns Wala man lang kayong suspicion, ERC. Hindi man lang na-trigger yung regulatory function nyo na, ay, magtanong muna tayo, bakit sabay-sabay ang shutdown. Meralco asked an energy thermomobile to bid the highest bid, 62 pesos, para bilhin ng Meralco ang pinakamataas na bid. Wala man lang kaduda-duda ang ERC na, ay, Meralco, ba't ka nagpabid? Ikaw ang bibili ng kuryente, eh, nagbid ka ng pinagbid mo yung bibilhan mo ng mataas, parang pumunta sa palengke ang Meralco, tinanong ang tindera, magkano ba yung isda mo? 150 ho, sir. Ang sagot ng Meralco, gawin mo kayang 300 pesos yan, bibilhin ko. Isn't the ERC suspicious? Ngayon naman, DOE doesn't even know if any of these plants who applied for maintenance shutdown in 2015 are the same plants who were, uh, who contrive the shortage of supply in 2013, Mr. Speaker. So I hope the distinguished colleague understands where I'm coming from. Yes, so, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, uh, this is precisely the reason why uh, the uh, JCPC Technical Working Group, 
will continue to function primarily to monitor um, uh, the implementation of uh, uh, this joint resolution. And uh, likewise, uh, we have already called in the uh, uh, Grid Management Committee to also assist uh, the JCPC, ensure that all of these uh, measures uh, needed uh, to, to, uh, to obviate any possibility of any collusion among these uh, power plants uh, to happen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, that the, the JCPC may have an oversight function, but the Malampaya turnaround and the highest rate that happened last year, not only was the JCPC unable to react, but even the regulatory body, not just an oversight, uh, regulatory body itself, the ERC, failed to protect the people. Kaya yun yung concern namin dito eh. So talaga bang uh, uh, ini-insist po ba ng DOE hanggang ngayon na hindi nila inalam kung any of these listed plants uh, were penalized by PMC? Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to reiterate that question. Bakala naman alam ng DOE, ayaw lang sabihin ng DOE kasi lalong mafifuel yung suspicion ng taong bayan na baka naman the same plants ang magsha-shutdown na naman, katulad nung shutdown sa Malampaya, Mr. Speaker. Uh, well, uh, in the matter of uh, that PEMC, uh, the good secretary remembers uh, one uh, plant, which is San Roque, which uh, went on a which so, went on a forced outage or violated the must offer rule, uh, but uh, primarily because uh, it could not produce the power because of uh, the. Uh, the, the water constraint. So uh, uh, that is uh, as far as uh, the good secretary can uh, recall. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, Your Honor, I think uh, that episode in uh, our uh, in the power sector, which happened uh, last year, I think have already taught us lessons. And this is precisely why the uh, JCPC now uh, has deemed it uh, fit to uh, really uh, be more proactive in, uh, in uh, performing uh, its mandate. And this is uh, precisely why, uh, as early as now, we have already anticipated this. I think uh, DOE has already learned its lesson also. And uh, as JCPC, we will uh, ensure that uh, DOE uh, do its job better than uh, how it has done before, how it has acted before, and this is part of our oversight. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pero yun yung problema eh, Mr. Speaker. DOE will do its job better now after learning from the lessons ng Malampaya shutdown last year. But tinanong ang DOE, are these the same plants? Hindi nila alam. It doesn't seem to strike me as a careful analysis of the situation. In fact, I would like to assure our distinguished colleague na hindi lang San Roque ang pininalize dyan sa nabanggit niyong pangalan. May iba pang planta dyan na the same plant was also penalized noong 2013. Kaya the fact na hindi alam ng DOE, parang ganito po ang sitwasyon. Eh sabi ng mga planta magsha-shutdown sila, kaya magkakakrisis tayo, therefore emergency powers. Hindi ba muna ang unang gawin ng DOE is investigahan kung totoo yung shutdown. Kasi kung hindi naman totoo yung shutdowns na yun, gawa-gawa lang naman, di wala tayong pag-uusapan dito, hindi tayo maghirap dito. That is the question we are posing, a very important question that has remained an answer until now. After so many months of discussions, hindi alam ng taong bayan sino-sino mga planta ngayon nabanggit na ano-anong ilang megawatts ang mawi-withhold. Yeah, so, and there, Mr. Speaker, if I may, ibig ba sabihin, pagplanta ka, hindi ka nakapag-run for a force major, ha? 
ano, ng walang tubig o something, ipipinalize ka ng PEMC for violating the must offer rule. Pwede po pala ba yan na hindi ka talaga, hindi mo talaga kaya, na shutdown ka talaga, then you are going to be penalized for violating the must offer rule. Is that what the, uh, the executive is trying to tell us, Mr. Speaker? Uh, on the matter of uh, yung uh, PEMC report, I think uh, uh, kahapon lang pala lumabas ito and uh, it has already been posted in the website of PEMC. And there are two uh, kas two plants uh, uh, two which are uh, in included in the ten that are uh, on a planned outage. No? These are Kaseknan and uh, as uh, mentioned earlier, San Roque. Yes. So, so uh, anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Your Honor, there is no attempt to, if you will note that these are even posted in websites, there is uh, transparency really uh, in uh, going through all of this. Uh, this is not being kept uh, from anyone. Otherwise, uh, we would not, uh, it would not have been even posted in the uh, website. Uh, it is just that uh, there are certain uh, processes that uh, uh, legal at that that uh, has to be observed. As in fact, I, my understanding is that uh, there is a pending motion for reconsideration on this. So in a, in a matter of speaking, this is even considered sub judice. But nonetheless, uh, while it is sub judice, it has been posted and it is already made public and uh, this is for everyone, for the public to see. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, nadagdagan na ang kaseknan kasama na ngayon. Dalawa lang po, that's about yes. it. But before I continue, Mr. Speaker, may I ask our distinguished colleague, uh, are you okay na i-continue natin to? It seems that uh, medyo weak kasi eh. So, I, I understand your plight, no? Uh, uh, I'm not trying to make life difficult for you, but we can postpone this interpolation, Mr. Speaker, if uh, the distinguished colleague would like to rest, or maybe a vice chairman or a vice chairperson would be willing to uh, be interpolated, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I don't want to... Uh, Congressman O'Malley is a friend, and, you know, kahit na hindi pa nga friend, eh, if you are really weak, na ngayon, uh, I don't think uh, magandang ipagpatuloy po natin ito for now. I'm willing naman po to reset our uh, interpolation. Mr. Speaker, I move for a few minutes suspension. Session suspended for a few minutes. Speaker, the parliamentary status is that we are still on the period of interpolation and debate on House Joint Resolution 21. For this purpose, may we recognize the Vice Chair of the Committee on Energy, the lady from Batanes, Honorable Henedina Abad, to defend the resolution and the gentleman from Bayan Muna Party List, the Honorable Parliamentarist, to interpolate the distinguished sponsor. Honorable Dina Abad is recognized to defend as a sponsor. Congressman Culminaris. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. I'm glad that uh, we recognize the valiant efforts of uh, Congressman O'Malley, but it's really difficult if you are physically, uh, you know, uh, unable na to continue. And I'm glad the uh, Vice Chair, uh, took his place, no? Para naman, anyway, nandiyan naman si Secretary Pitilia, who will be very willing naman to explain the proposal. So, anyway, a few questions, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to go back to the issue of supply. So, ilan po ang total megawatts ng mga plantang magsha-shutdown? If the distinguished sponsor would answer. Uh, ilan po ang megawatts na total ng plantang magsha-shutdown? Uh, I mean, ilang megawatts totally ang mawi-withdraw sa, mawi sa grid uh, during the period under question? From maintenance shutdown po. Uh, just maintenance shutdown. Ang pinaka-highest uh, na, pinaka na wattage na mawawala po.
pwede na. Ang meron po tayong datos, ang total po ng uh, megawatts ay 3,072. Ito po ay sa linggo week 14 sa buwan po ng Abril. Ito, kasama, kasama na po lahat-lahat, uh, pati po ng planned outages, pati po yung mga derating, ito po yung total. 3,072 yung total po. Uh, okay. Ilan po yung sa maintenance shutdown lang? I'm sure the DOE has the numbers there. They are trying to argue that uh, may shortage of supply, so yung maintenance lang, yung scheduled shutdown lang. 1185 po. Ang pinakamataas. Ito ho yung sa maintenance. Sa maintenance. Uh, ito po bang 1185 na ito? Napakalaki po nito eh. In fact, uh, ito na yung ating uh, problema. Hindi po ba pwedeng magalaw ito before or after summer? I've been asking this, pero hindi klaro ang sagot dito palagi ng DOE na hindi pwedeng igalawin kasi based on their investigation, siguro, I presume they investigated, uh, talagang kailangan-kailangan mag-shutdown. Nag-investiga po ba ang DOE kung kailangan-kailangan mag-shutdown itong mga plantang ito, sampo, na mag uh, ko ng 1,185 megawatts na mawawala sa planta? Ito rin po ay matagal naming pinag-usapan sa sunod-sunod na technical working group. Yung inyo pong tanong ay paulit-ulit din namin tinatanong. At ang naging sagot po na palagay namin ay yun na po ang talagang kahuli-huling sagot ay ito daw po ay bahagi sa grid maintenance na kinakailangan gawin. So ang, ang kabuan po ng trabaho na ginawa ng technical working group ay assuming po yung pinakamababa at yung pinakamataas na pwede nating um, maranasan na kabawasan ng supply ng enerhiya o kuryente sa ating lugar ay tinignan po namin ang sunod-sunod na mga posibleng gawin na sa bandang huli ay ang magiging resulta ay may kasiguraduhan na tayo mapupunoan po natin yung kakulangan at yung at the least cost po sa publiko at sa lahat po sa atin. Can the DOE po, maraming salamat po, can the DOE swear that they actually investigated these plants or just took their word for it that they need the maintenance shutdown? I say I would like to ask for a study of this investigation kung may ginawa ang DOE na totoo o tunay na ba ito? Hindi na ba ito kapareho ng malampaya shutdown last year? Baka naman kapareho lang ito. Tube leak na naman o boiler uh, uh, problem na naman. Talaga po bang uh, inimbestigahan ng DOE ito in finer details? Ito ho kasing mga planned, uh, planned shutdown na to o outages. Ito po ay mga planadong maintenance, kagaya po siguro ng mga sasakyan, hindi ho ba? Para higit silang maging episyente sa pagtakbo, meron po mga scheduled maintenance. Unfortunately po, ang, ang ayon po sa pagsusuri ng DOE, ito po ay hindi pwedeng may atras ng uh, malayo sa kanilang mga schedule. Para ho itong tayo ay gumagamit ng sasakyan o kung ano pa ho, di ba? Meron po silang mga nakatakdang maintenance period. Yan Sal po ang kasagutan dyan. Salamat po, uh, Madam Speaker. I would like Wala to pong ano man. I would like to ask for a copy of that DOE study, Mr. Speaker. Pero hindi pwedeng ihambing ng DOE sa sasakyan ito. Kasi kung magpapatyon up ako o dadalhin ko ang sasakyan ko sa talyer, huwag ko namang itiming sa araw ng binyag ng anak ko o kaya sa araw ng kasal ko. Parang gusto sabihin ng mga plantang ito, sa araw ng kasal mo, doon ka magpapabunot ng ngipin. Pwede naman pabunot ka ng ngipin o magpatyon up ka before the day that is very important for you. 
or after that day. Hindi siya, hindi siya automatic eh, not just like a car, pwede na, kailangan namang dalin sa taliyel. Of course, kailangan dalin sa taliyel, pero planned kasi ito na maintenance eh. So yung tune up, Mr. Speaker, you can do it some other time. Unless the DOE swears na hindi talaga ito pwedeng magalaw at dapat talaga, pwede, kailangan, kailangan talaga during this peak summer months, when the demand is very high, doon talaga sila tatiming ng kanilang maintenance shutdown, Mr. Speaker. And may I ask for a copy of that investigation, if I may, doon sa...